subtle his tactics are. And I, I really believe that the most cunning and deceptive and masterful work of the enemy is being woven in and out of the mindsets of Christians. His need to work over time with the people that are already outside of the kingdom of God, but the ones who are moving forward and doing what God wants, you know, it, it's kind of laughable because when stuff comes against you, <laughs> you have one of two perspectives. You can get beaten up by it or you can stop and go, hmm, this might actually be a compliment. It might actually be the proof that what I'm doing is right. Does that make sense? Oh, to you? without a doubt, it's a it's a shift in perception. Like if you if you're not, I mean, why would Satan be interested in go like you saying going after somebody that's completely lost? He wants to keep us separate from God. So if you're stepping forward in God for His kingdom, what do you think Satan's going to sit there and twiddle his thumbs and go, oh well, I guess I'll go somewhere else? No, he's going to go after you. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And there's con you, we all need to understand that there is a constant backdrop in everybody's life. Of of this this constant th constant thing going on in the spirit realm of the enemy trying to pull us away with whatever gravity force he can use, but what I want to submit to you is that the greater focus needs to be not on that constant force, but on the beautiful extraordinary power that sits on the inside of everybody that we underestimate. The power of the resurrected Christ is on the inside of every single one of us. Jesus says the kingdom of God dwells on the inside of you and the kingdom of heaven is right here around us. These two dimen this, the dimension of the king of heaven and the dimension of darkness are right here. And the, the, the question is, which one are we going to listen to? You know, it's kind of like that point in the scriptures where Elisha uh, is talking to uh, 